Hello and welcome everybody and thank you guys for joining me to yet another class guide. My name is Wilkie and we're going to take a look at my Holy Knight or Paladin for the Western version. As usual, this is going to be a twofold guide. We're going to talk about Chaos Dungeons and Garden Raids. We do start with Garden Raids here because I think this is definitely the most important one. As far as statistics go, we are having specialty and agility. Now the ratios are definitely up for debate. A lot of Koreans actually prefer to run lower specialty and higher agility to get even more quota reduction. The main reason here is with higher specialty, your aura has better effects and you're going to fill your faith bar faster. The waking damage is really not important because Holy Knight is not a DPS class. And agility is mainly there for equivalent reduction, but also attack speed and movement speed it does help. So higher agility means you're going to poop out your skills, shields and buffs more often. Higher specialty means you're going to fill your gauge more often or you're going to have the aura more often. And the aura is going to be of higher effectiveness. Now. Like I said, this is pretty much for personal debate. Most Koreans that I've checked guides on actually have lower specialty and higher agility. This is, like I said, though, pretty much up for personal tastes. Whichever way you go, it's definitely along the line of specialty agility, whether it's like 50-50 or like 60-40 or whether it's like 30-70 is really up for you. This is what I've used and I cleared every Gardener raid that was possible to me on that character just fine. As far as engravings go, Healing Faith is a no-brainer. You want that aura to heal and especially have the damage reduction on. The heal isn't crazily much, given uh, compared to like Bard that heals like a major chunk at once, but the damage reduction is really, really, really good on it. So it's not only that you heal your target, uh, your teammates, but you also prevent specific damages from being applied. And if you stack that with other buffs, you can actually pop a hefty damage reduction onto your teammates so much so that you may actually be able to negate almost all incoming damage. Awakening. I don't really think I have to talk about this. You want to have your awakening as often and as fast as possible readily available because this is one of your major gain gainers and I'll show that to you in just a second. Specialist is the new engraving. The, if not the best overall engraving in the entire game if it comes to supportive stuff. It increases shields and heals and also if your target is below 50% it yet further amplifies the effects by an additional 12% of the three, so definitely take those. Spirit Absorption is a counter, like complementary one here. Since we do have agility, you don't necessarily need it, which is also the reason why I quote unquote only have it on level two because level three would have been fairly expensive. Alternatively, you could be running heavy armor, and if you do actually are in the luxurious spot to be able to get Master Fence at level one. It is really beneficial because it's going to help you build your faith uh, faith gauge even faster. So if you do have the opportunity to get whatever engravings you need, so any of those combinations, maybe a Spirit Resolution and Master Fencer level 1, definitely go for it. It's a really, really nice addition. It helps you build gauge faster. So definitely try to get that. But it is an ideal solution. But this one, what you see here on the screen, is perfectly fine for any endgame raid. Outside of this, let's talk about skill builds. So... First things first, we don't have a whole lot of blue skills. The dagger launch is pure mobility, so there's nothing really to talk about. You don't really want anything else here. You ideally want this one because it adds a shield on it, which can be used in a panic situation and just, uh, well, further movement speed. Early self-explanatory. No, we don't want that. Well. Second skill is going to be Harsh Retribution. Now, this needs to have a buff. In Korea, this one has been buffed to also be a counterattack spell, so... In conjunction with Sword of Justice, Harsh Retribution are now two head attacks with both of them having counter on it. Right now on Russia we only have the counter on Sword of Justice, however I think it's a good practice to get used to that skill because in the future this is going to be a much better ability. Purify, you can use the leap, I don't really think it's used. That one adds a little bit of extra damage, you can take either higher damage or faster execution or destruction if you really wanted to. Um, since Holy Knight has so little destruction, I think it's not really worth it. Higher damage and yeah, triple attack. Alternatively, you can go for a smooth cup. Sword of Justice is like the main counter ability. Super good range, super smooth execution, especially very easy to set up the counter. You definitely want the movement speed one. Alternatively, you could go for the magic trail that increases the damage. Path to Light is what makes this ability actually instantly activate. So if I don't have that tripod here, if I don't hit anything, it's just going to be that small poke. So, if you hit something, it then is going to turn into that one. But Path of Light makes it so that even if you don't hit the enemy, it's going to shoot out the big sword. So definitely take that one. 
concentrated energy, you don't really need the cooldown reduction because in boss fights, you're only going to hit one boss anyway. So it's going to be like one second cooldown reduction. So definitely take concentrated energy instead. That is it for blue skills. Also, before I go to yellow skills, the main reason I told you about the awakening engraving is just look at how much gauge we're going to gain. Boom, that was almost a full bar from a single awakening. So you can see where this is going. Lower cooldown reduction or lower cooldowns on awakening and higher awakening capacity means more auras to use. As far as yellow skills go, unbearable radiance, you want this one to shoot this out a little bit faster. And you definitely want stigma that amplifies the damage taken by 10%. This is your go-to debuff for bosses. Rufian's word. Now this is a little bit of a change. You can either get stigma here as well which uh, lasts for 12 seconds, which is a fairly long one, or you can increase the area of effect. Whichever way you use is pretty much personal choice. I do like the big area because I do like to use this one defensively because inside the circle of this, you're going to be taking 70% less damage. And as you can see with that radius, that one's really big and you can see that there's a little trick. You can also just place it below yourself. So it can be used as a panic button to save teammates from major damage. Or if you're just close to the boss and you see something incoming, just drop it below here. Make it so that everybody's in that circle. Et voila. You also get a shield by yourself with that. Alternatively, like I said, you can get stigma. Hand of Heaven, fairly straightforward. You want this one to have a higher range because otherwise you might actually not hit something. Inexhaustible Faith is for me because I want to gain gauge as fast as possible. You could gain Warrior's Fortitude, which makes you, which basically grants you tenacity. It's more of a PvP tripod than anything. I do think the Faith Gain is better and Just Cause is your main damage buff for your team and for yourself. So we're going to pop this out. Boom. Just Cause for 7 seconds. This is also one of the two skills that are going to be rotating around later on in game in order to provide a damage buff to your team. Shield of Faith. I don't really think I have to talk anything about this. This is your main shield skill. The only skill that is like truly only supportive because it doesn't deal damage. Really, really good skill. You can use mana cost reduction, though I never really had problems with mana unless I spammed super hard. I don't really think the speed of the shield is really that matterful, so I would take the movement speed. Helps you move around faster. The second road tripod is definitely up for debate. I like to have a cleanse, especially in raids like Balton or Beacus where debuffs going on. The cleanse is really, really nice. You can go for the long lasting duration to make it last really long. Or you can actually go for power shield, which is really ideal in order to avoid big AoEs, for example, in Papunika Void Dungeons, the first boss, if somebody triggers the counter, this is a very good shield tripod to pretty much soak the entire damage. So which one of those you were wanting to use is pretty much up to you. Also sort of depends on the content that you're using. I think the cleanse is just overall really good and miraculous healing straightforward. After the shield expires, you're going to heal your teammates for the cost of a 10 second increase cooldown. Last but not least, we have Guardian Angel, which is like the second skill paired with Hand of Haven. Same here, Inexhaustible Faith to gain your Faith gain faster, just cause again. And Heavenly Requiem, you can use the mana regeneration, though typically I never really had problems with that, nor did my teammates. If you really want to get like the full support route, you can always take that one. I think the higher radius and the higher damage is definitely better. What I meant with rotating between Hand of Haven, Hand of Heaven, and Guardian Angel is you can see that both of these buffs actually have the Just Cause buff on it. However, they don't stack. So ideally, what you would want to do if we're like in a default setting, you're going to pop the first one, right? And then you're going to wait for the buff to wear off or like almost wear off. And then you're going to pop and refresh this. Also, this is something that I wanted to show you here. You don't need to hit anything. Obviously, you want to hit something because that means you're going to be generating gauge, but even if you don't hit anything, you're st still going to apply the buffs. So definitely try to cycle those around. And ideally, like I said, use one, wait for the Just Cause buff to wear off. And once that buff is out, pop the second one, et voila. And this is how you rotate the buff around to keep the maximum uptime you can possibly have. Because that is a really, really nice attack power buff for yourself, but mostly for your teammates. And that is it for the Garden Raid build. Let's quickly talk about the Chaos Dungeon build, where it definitely changes up wide a bit. So I switched to my Chaos setup. Now, here's one thing. First of all, I'm using the exact same stats, so I don't have anything specifically that I'm using for Chaos Dungeons, nor did I change engravings. And yes, I will upload a video of my Holy Knight doing a Chaos Dungeon just fine. 
So you can see that this is perfectly valid clear chaos dungeons with. You don't need any specific engravings. Obviously, having engravings such as Gladiator, Initiative, or just any damage engraving for that matter is obviously going to help you in chaos dungeons, but you can still clear it just fine even without anything. There are definitely a bunch of other skills here. Shattering Steel, you want quickly prepare to have it as ready or as often as possible. This is going to be your go-to bread and butter faith generator and also DPS skill. Sieve makes the skill hit an additional time and Steel Fan grants this a very nice AoE as you can see here. Really, really comfortable skill. Good AoE, fast execution. And if I were to have no cooldown reduction in here, you can see five seconds until the skill is ready. Really, really, really helpful. Dagger launch here, same thing here, only just for movement. We don't really need the shield because it's Chaos Dungeon, so if you're not really, even if you're taking damage, just potion it up or heal yourself. That is just fine. Harsh Retribution, the only change here is going to be Smooth Cut. So this actually has like a circular motion, which grants it better AoE compared to the more linear slashes. Outside of this, same thing here. White Attack, do you definitely want the pull one here? You also want the perfect moment, the sweet spot here, and Thunder Whirlwind. You don't want unstable energy. Thunder Whirlwind is definitely better. How this looks like is you're just going to charge up. And then you have the three lightnings. And all of those deal damage and drag the enemies with you. So what that looks like, let me just summon a few guys here. We're just going to yoink those people in. And then it, it's going to push them out alongside with the lightning. So that is really, really helpful in order to clear Chaos Dungeon and Sword of Justice. This time we definitely want the magic trail because faster movement speed, we're fighting Chaos Dungeon mobs. Critical, I do like this one because we are not going to have any crit rate. So having a 30% flat crit rate is really nice. If you have a higher level tripod, then by all means go for it. Alternatively, you could go for Path of Light, but I think the crit is really helpful. And this time we do actually want Stream of Light since we're fighting hordes of enemies. This makes it so that you can easily reset your cooldowns fairly often if you hit into a mass of enemies. Last but not least, we're just going to take a quick look at the blues, at the yellow skills. So Guardian Angel is pretty much the same as it was in Raid. You want just cause, even if it's only for yourself. Because uh, anything else really is not that great. Attack speed, we have enough of that. We don't really need any damage reduction. So Faith Gain, just cause. And definitely Heavenly Recrim. This is your hardest nuke in your entire skill set. This is able to vanquish any normal foe with a single hit. Then we have Hand of Haven. Same thing here. You want the high radius, inexhaustible faith. And just cause again. Basically just another good AoE. Not nearly as powerful as Guardian Angel. But still decent rage and still good AoE. Last but not least... Wave of Light is your go-to bread and butter. I smash everything together, I pull everything together. Merciless Radiance is so that it actually deals higher damage and makes this a bit slower, which slower here is actually a good thing. Affected area, you definitely want the highest area you can get. And Stinging Flashes, I'm just gonna summon a few mobs and show you what the skill is like. And then again, like I said, I will upload a video of Medium Chaos Dungeons. So you can see where this is going. So we're gonna cast this. And you can see we're going to drag enemies in, so this is why you want the radius to be as big as possible. It's just really nicely lumping those up. Boom, the final explosion, dealing pretty good damage. And that is it. That is what I use for Chaos Dungeons. Like I said, no engravings changed, but I'm going to upload a video of you guys seeing that. And here's just another example of Guardian Angel just nuking everything. Anyways, this is all for my Holy Knight slash Paladin build. Like I said, the agility specialty values were definitely up for debate. Whether you run Spirit Absorption, if you have higher agility, you may completely leave out Spirit Absorption because it has nothing in terms of cooldown reduction. If you run higher specialty, I urge you to run at least Spirit Absorption level 2 because otherwise you're going to be very snail-like and uh, that's no bueno. Outside of this, I do hope this was helpful and if you guys want to see me live, I do also stream sometimes on Twitch. So feel free to check out the link in the description below if you have any other questions. As usual, comment section is open and up for debate. Last but not least, I do hope you guys are safe, do stay hopeful, and I'll see you guys next time.